Well, welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming in. Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Some of you may be struggling at the moment with the loss of a partner. Um, could have been by breakup, could have been by accident, could have been by death. Whatever your situation is, however long it's been, I hope that you have found your way through it successfully and with the best help that you could possibly end up with. Um, we pray for Israel in the name of Jesus for a quick and swift end to that war. And we now turn to Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 24. Better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Now I want to be fair to this passage and to the people listening and go, better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife or husband. So we're going to change wife to partner. Better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome partner. Many of you have experienced this in your relationships. The relationship could have been better, but it wasn't. The life that you were living was cornered, and you felt like you needed to be out in the sky, out on a roof, looking at the stars, looking at the sky, because the person that you were in the relationship with wasn't sharing themselves the way that they should have been. And it become a horrible situation to live in. As I just fix this mess up. It was better for you to start to consider to uh, not be in that situation. It was too, becoming too hard, it was becoming too difficult, it was becoming too quarrelsome. Quarrelsome is an element that clearly reveals a state of unresolve. Unresolves embedded itself into the relationship, and this isn't uncommon. Um, and there's a better way to go. Unresolve is not the way to go, I can assure you. You can solve unresolved. And when your partner has become quarrelsome, you might be sharing the house, but the house is no longer a home. Because what's being shared has gone from positive to negative. And this can cause you to feel cornered, horribly cornered. <clears throat> a foolish son or daughter, is his father's ruin. And a quarrelsome partner is like a constant dripping. A foolish child is his father's and mother's, is his parents' ruin. That's because of the worry and stress and concern and trouble that they cause. And a quarrelsome partner is like a constant dripping. And a constant dripping can cause all sorts of ruin. A constant dripping and a, on a rainy day and a contentious partner are alike. Now the Chinese in the war used to use the drip, dripping torture method on their prisoners of war. And this caused diabolical uh, torment, pain, and agony. And this is where quarrelsome and contentious states in a relationship end up. Many people have been unable to find their way out of a quarrelsome situation. They've stayed in it. They've shared the house. The house is no longer a home. It's divided, and a house divided will not stand, will it, the Bible says. 
and they would have been better off leaving. Because the corner of a rooftop speaks of the most dangerous part of the roof. If you're out on the corner, that's the most likeliest place in which you'll fall. You're right out on the pinnacle, on the most dangerous point of the roof. You're on the point of the roof, the external point. The closest part to the edge, the closest, the most scariest part, the most fearful part, the most dangerous part, the closest part to death. And this is how troubled, this is how traumatic a relationship can be when it becomes contentious and quarrelsome, when unresolved has enforced itself. The resolve's no longer there. That's what happens in these relationships. And the situation's critical. The situation's horrible. Um, faithfulness and loyalty are keeping the person in the relationship. Devotion. But it's not enough to fix whatever the contention is, whatever the quarrel is about. And this is the point. In my, well, in both of my last relationships, there was um, obviously family members that didn't take to me very well. I'm not sure why they really were outside the relationship, but family members can have a tremendous influence on the person that you're with. I guess the quarrel's going to be there until there's a form of resolve. Unless the resolve comes into the situation, there's always going to be a quarrel. And sometimes resolve is so far away from where we need it to be, um, it just doesn't come, this doesn't show up, this doesn't turn up. This causes people to look outside the relationship, they'll take risks. They decide that it's better to take a risk and cause a possible tragedy or some kind of um, reason for divorce or separation. That's called a reverse discard, where somebody deliberately causes a situation where the other person just gets up and goes. I've had that happen to me. Um, but whatever the case is, whatever we're quarrelling over, this could be you could be quarrelling over an affair. You could come home and your husband's with another man. You could come home and the dinner hasn't been cooked again. The washing up hasn't been done again. There's a thousand reasons why we can quarrel. A thousand. And that doesn't make it right. But that's... That's usually what the situation is. Somebody hasn't done something that they should have, or somebody has done something that they shouldn't have, over and over and over again, without resolve. Somebody's taken up the drugs again. Somebody's been cruel to their partner again. Somebody's neglected a situation that they should have fixed again. Somebody's spent the money that they shouldn't have again. Somebody's drunk again, somebody's stoned again, somebody's in trouble with the police again, somebody's not looking after themselves again, somebody's whinged again, somebody's complained again, somebody's interfered again, and it's better to live on the corner of the roof than to share a house with a contentious and quarrelsome partner. There's a contentious aspect of the partner there. A constant dripping on a rainy day and a contentious partner are alike. Have you ever tried to sleep and there's a drip, 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 drip on the roof or, or somewhere where you don't want it to be? Well, if there is, it's better to live on the corner of the roof than to share the house with a quarrelsome partner and a constant dripping on a rainy day and a contentious partner are alike. There's no way out of it. There's a better way. 
That's to get out. Get out. Don't be cornered inside the house. Put yourself out on the roof where you can launch. <laughs> launch into your new destination. Because it's better to share a house with nobody in it than to share a house with a quiet. Can just quickly before I finish my second marriage and my first marriage both ended up with disgruntled women. They just were disgruntled. They couldn't find a way of being happy. There was nothing I could do to help them. It was a situation that was out of my control. Um, and the situation where, quite frankly, I didn't care where I was as long as I wasn't in the house with these troublemakers because that's what they turned out to be, just out and out trouble, troublemakers. You don't want trouble in your life. It's hard enough as it is without people causing trouble when they shouldn't. Um, I do excuse, ask you to excuse the noise in the background. The people that live here are taking responsibility and cleaning each week as they go. And that's, see, that, that stops quarrels and contentions. These people are responsible. They've taught to be responsible. They have to be responsible or they don't stay here. It's as simple as that. It's better to live on the corner of a roof than in a relationship where somebody's causing trouble, there's no resolve, they continue to do it, they're contentious, they've become contentious, they've worn out, they've slipped out of where they should be in the relationship, and you've decided that it's better to get out. Sometimes the best thing you can do if somebody's lost their way for everyone is to walk away. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me, and bye for now.